Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Almost exactly 5 years ago I uploaded this video of a calculator that I built in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2. It went viral and got hundreds of thousands of views, but the video doesn't actually explain how it works at all, all it does is show a few calculations in action. This is because the video wasn't made for YouTube, but rather to support a reddit post that does explain it. So today, to celebrate my 5 year anniversary as a YouTuber, I will finally explain to you how it works. Let's quickly see it in action again first. To activate it you simply put it in test mode and watch the trains do their thing. First they will encounter the split between addition and multiplication. The track piece is blue so it's set to multiplication and the trains will go to the left. A little bit later the first train goes up a hill and the second train bumps into it causing it to go backwards and move on to a different track. Now both trains are on their own separate tracks and will take the exit that has a green track piece. In this case that's 3 and 7, so we're multiplying 3 and 7 here and should get the answer of 21. Once underground the trains follow one of the many tracks, purple or blue for the first train and yellow or orange for the second train. Because 3 is the 4th number, the first train comes above ground on the 4th row of hills and starts going back and forth. Once it hits the 8th column, the second train comes speeding along and crashes into the first train, pushing it over the hill. This train now follows a track underground to one of these 100 possible answers and a little bit later it peaks above ground at the correct answer of 21. Having seen it in action, I'll now explain how each element works as it involves quite a few weird tricks that are only possible with cheats. The first thing is the mode selector. How does the train know to go to the left when it's blue and how do you change it? Changing it is really easy. First make sure that you have the clearance checks disabled. This means that the game no longer checks if anything is in the way when you try to build something. Now simply right click on the blue track piece, then delete it and rebuild it. This causes it to turn purple and the trains will now go to the right instead. Wait, what? How does that work? To understand it you need to understand how track merging works. Here we have a looping coaster and a mine train coaster. If I build the looping coaster into the mine train coaster the two tracks will connect and I cannot build any further. If we test the looping coaster we can see that it traverses onto the mine track without any issue as the two tracks are now merged. However this only works in one direction, when the train tries to go backwards across the same merge it crashes. The direction in which it works depends on which track piece was built first. If we remove the mine train coaster track and rebuild that into the looping coaster it would work backwards but now it no longer works forwards. Back to the calculator, it starts off like this with just a purple track and then we build the blue track into it. This merge will only work backwards so the trains stay on the purple track and go to the right. Notice that because we built the purple track first it is rendered on top of the blue track so in the spot where there are both a blue and a purple straight track piece we only see the purple one. If we now right click on it we select it and we can remove it. This reveals the blue track piece which means that when we rebuilt the purple piece we built it into the blue piece, merging the purple track into the blue track and allowing the train to go left. And not only that, but since now the blue piece was built first, that's the one we get to see. To switch back you just select and delete the blue piece to get back at the starting point again, so you can keep doing this forever. To make only that one track piece colored, I used an alternative color scheme to paint the rest of the track brown. When you build a new track piece, the game always uses the main color scheme, so this works out perfectly. So that's how the first track switch works. Once the train has passed it, the next special element is the hill where the two trains bump into each other. There is a certain time span between the departing of the two trains and the distance between the trains depends on their speed. If they go very fast the distance will be large and if they go slow the distance will be small. The speed on top of the hill is so slow that this separation distance becomes shorter than the length of the train, causing them to bump into each other. The the second train now travels across two track merges that only work backwards and then they both encounter the number switchboard. This is just a series of 10 switches that work identical to the mode switch. If it's red the train goes straight ahead and if it's green it will take the exit. Once underground it's all about timing. 
These tracks may look random, but they are all carefully constructed to give the exact delay necessary for the crash to happen at exactly the right moment. The first train goes in a fairly straightforward line to the fourth row of hills. Using some more backwards track merges and some boosters to keep it at the same speed, it oscillates back and forth moving one hill to the right every time. Meanwhile, the second train is on a much longer delay track as it needs to wait for the first train to get to the eighth column. Once it's time, it speeds up and follows the hills of that column. I built the columns one unit above the rows. This prevents them from merging, but it still puts the trains close enough that they can collide. Once they do, the second train explodes and pushes the first train over the hill, after which it simply follows a track to the number 21 on the answer board. Funnily enough, a lot of these answers are impossible to get from multiplying or adding to one digit numbers and aren't actually connected to anything. The addition part works the exact same as the multiplying part by the way, it's just mirrored and connected to different answers. The most difficult thing about building this was working out the timings. I had made this prototype after spending all day at work thinking it up and while it does work it's very messy. There is no way I could expand this from a measly 4 to a massive 100 different collision points if I didn't get some regularity to it. So I came up with this design of 10 rows and 10 columns which has the advantage that once the first row and the first column were timed perfectly the rest automatically fell into place. Even just those 19 collision points were already quite a pain to do and I spent so many hours tweaking the tracks, making them longer, adding boosters, removing track again, tweaking the booster speed and so on, but once I got it to work it was very satisfying. One thing that might look a little odd is these small sections where the track banks and then immediately unbanks again. Notice that this always happens when two tracks that are at the same height need to cross over. If I didn't bank the track, they would, despite one of them being rotated by 90 degrees, form a merge and one of the trains would go to the wrong answer. Merges only work if the two track pieces built on top of each other are the exact same, so by banking the track at the crossing point you prevent an accidental merge. In total there are 46 different giga coasters involved here. Every row and column along with their delay track is a different track, which already gets us to 40. And then there are the answers, the plus track, the times track, the number picker, the connections between the numbers and the delay tracks, and lastly the main ride that you put in test mode, which is called calculate. And that's how the calculator works. Thank you so much for all the support over the past 5 years, it's been a wild ride that I hope never ends. I could never have imagined building this calculator would lead to me doing YouTube full time, but here we are so somehow it did and I'm very grateful for that. If you want to see this calculator for yourself and mess around with it, there is a download link in the description. To see a slot machine I built, which was the very first video I ever talked in, click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.